Hello again, everybody. I'm Ron Thule, and I'll be your host over the next couple of days. And our format is simple. Today we'll be looking at teams from the West with their coaches and players, and tomorrow the East. Let's kick, kick things off right off the bat with Louisiana Tech and their head coach, the reigning Conference USA Coach of the Year, Skip Bowles. Co Skip, good to see you again, Ron, buddy. Ron, good to see you as well. It's great to be here. And also joining us a couple of players on the team, quarterback Jamar Smith will be getting his first starts officially come the fall. And also Cedric Cooper, honorable mention Conference USA. He is their safety. I want to start with you. Last year, um, you've had great success over the last three years, and we were just chatting about it. How tough is it to keep that consistency that Louisiana Tech has had during that span? Well, I think it's about setting a standard. We Obviously, there's a lot of athletes in the state of Louisiana, and we've been very fortunate in the recruiting, but we've got some great players. And when you have great players and they come in and they buy in uh, the way they do, it makes winning year in and year out a whole lot easier. But we, cer we certainly have some pretty special players. They have won 19 of the last 24 Conference USA games. That ties Western Kentucky for the best winning percentage in that time. The last three years, Louisiana Tech has had the luxury of having a senior quarterback. Now, you're talented. Don't worry, I'll get to you, Jamar, I promise. <laughs> but you don't have the senior quarterback. Do you have to make adjustments for that? No, I, I think I'm, I have a lot of confidence in Jamar. I mean, when you look at Jamar, I had to start a year ago at the Arkansas game. He went in there. I thought he did a great job. He showed poise and confidence. And for a young player, uh, I think he's got a great grasp of the offense, and I think he'll do a great job. We've been very fortunate with Cody Sokol, Jeff Driscoll, mm -hmm. and Ryan Higgins the last three years who have all thrown for about 4,000 yards or more. Uh, but I feel very comfortable with Jamar and what he brings to the table as our quarterback. But he also has some weapons. You've got a couple of transfers coming in. You've got a good, solid running game, some talented wide receivers. Give us the skinny on those. Well, I think having two senior running backs coming back and Jared Kraft, a 1,000-yard rusher from a year ago who's back, I think Jamar brings more than just a thrower as the last three have been, and then he brings some athleticism with his with his feet. We returned three starters on the offensive line up front with O'Shea Dugas, an all-conference player, uh, coming back at guard. Uh, I look at, you know, we lost a guy like Trent Taylor and Carlos Henderson, two very talented players, obviously two of the top 10 in the country last year. Uh, but with Teddy Veal and with Alfred Smith and with some of the guys coming back there, I think there's plenty of targets to throw to. We just got to – we're going to have to have a great camp, and I think from an offensive standpoint, it's going to be really important that we get some of these new pieces to really gel together. Teddy Veal, of course, <coughs> is a transfer from Tulane. How do you tweak your offense year to year? Because I was talking to a couple of coaches a moment ago saying you can't get – settled into one thing because the game changes. How well, do you tweak it? I think the game changes because of your talent level. I mean, you've got to look at what your strengths are as a, as a football team. You may have five senior returning starters that have been starting for three years, and that may be where you want to put your saddle a little bit more on your offensive line. You may have some experience where you feel like you need to play space. So I, I think you have to be multiple uh, when you look at offenses today, but I think the key to it all is how do you highlight your strengths and how do you hide your weaknesses as a football coach? Let's talk to the players for a second, Jamar Smith obviously also plays on the Louisiana Tech baseball team. He's got a pretty good pedigree because his dad played at Alabama and also the National Football League. The excitement level of knowing this is your job, what's it been like this summer as opposed to maybe the previous summer? I take the same mindset. Uh, always work hard. Always uh, be dedicated and committed to your work. Get in the film room. Go out and do extra work. Do extra drills. Ask Coach uh, Retay and Coach Oz if I need help. We didn't think, and uh, just try to lead some of the guys. You know, last year I wasn't in the leader uh, position because uh, Ron was ahead. He earned a spot last spring. So any questions I had, I asked him. But then some of the young guys that come in right now, they have a lot of questions. So now I, I feel like I'm a better leader than I, I ever have been before. Depth may be a problem at quarterback for you this season, but the fact that you do play baseball, you're obviously very athletic. Do you want to run when you get the opportunity? Or will you have to look over and see Coach Holt just going, no, 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 no? <laughs> Uh, whenever the opportunity comes, I'll try to do the best I can to make plays my feet. I always keep my eyes downfield, not taking off immediately. Just get out the pocket, see if I can do a scramble drill, get the ball to my receivers, and uh, if I can't, just make plays my feet. Well, Coach Holtz was mentioning you, you lost two outstanding wide receivers. Has a lot of time been spent trying to get the communication and the relationship with the receivers that are coming back this year between you two? Uh, yes, we are. Uh, we, uh, the receiver core, we throw almost three to four days a week just trying to get the connection with the guys, see who run different routes, see who run this, see who like what different route they 
who, who, whoever like which uh, route they want. So we just got there, work hard, throw the different routes, and however long it takes, that's how long we'll be out there. And he will be the only player in Conference USA that wears high top tied shoes. <laughs> wing tip. Wing -tip. High top wing, wing tip. tip. Yes, sir. And that's this is the, the old sock team, <laughs> yes. by the way, as, as Coach Olds was mentioning. <laughs> Honorable mention Conference USA last year. Cedric Cooper also joins us. What goals have you set for yourself this season? Um, my main goal for this season is to help this team bring a conference championship because, you know, I've been there the last three years and just getting so far and just not completing the mission, it just hurts so bad and just we just want that so bad. Now, last year the, the pass defense was ranked 116th in the country. Do you know that stat and does that bother you from a pride standpoint? Uh, being a player from a pride standpoint, yes, it, it bothers me, but I know we can get it better. It's just – you know, it's going to come with time and uh, dedication and working and studying more film and just being more dedicated to our craft. Now, last year you finished fifth on the team in total tackles, as mentioned. You made all-conference USA team, and a lot of people are saying that you have the possibility of moving up to the first team this year. But for this team to be successful again, what must you do defensively? Uh, defensively, we have to improve. You know, we have a couple of new faces, and we have to improve getting them experience and um, being better players. And just, you know, understanding the game from an all-around standpoint, not just your position, understanding what everybody else does and how they do it. That way, when we get, come to game time, you don't have no questions on whether, you know, what's my job or what I have to do. You just out there execute. Five starters return on that defense, a defense that also accounted for 44 sacks last season. Right. Talk about your defensive line because you've got a couple of studs. We really do. I think when you look at Jalen Ferguson, who I think was ranked second or third in the country in the number of sacks at 14 and a half, who is a, a real talent. We've got really a, an, an army of players up there. I mean, when you look at it, we've got some depth. We'll play a lot of different players, trying to keep fresh people in the game and trying to get them uh, playing at a high level. But I think the defensive front was our strength a year ago. I know uh, Coop alluded to it just a little bit late, or earlier about we've got to get better in our pass defense. And I think having guys like Cedric Cooper come back is definitely going to help. But then there's going to be some new faces on that defense. There's going to be some new faces at linebacker and some new faces, new faces uh, at the corner positions. And so I'm, I'm excited to see what this football team can do, especially on the defensive side of the ball, because we certainly have some areas to improve. Well, you mentioned the, the linebacker spot. Only one starter returns. Who is stepping up in that position? Because you obviously have to have that not only from a play standpoint, but from a leadership standpoint. Well, and you talked about the defensive line is very solid when you look across the board at where those guys that are up there. But at linebacker right now, you've got Russell Ferris, who's coming back, who was one of our top tacklers from a year ago. But there's, we feel like we've got eight guys right now that coming through spring. We had a junior college player come in. We've had uh, Colin Scott, some players really step up. Davon Washington, some players coming along. Brandon Derman. Uh, and so I, I think the linebacker core, we are talking about it on the ride over here. We think has a chance to be one of our strong points as a defensive football team, and that has not been the case the last couple of years. Well, Ferris had 75 tackles last season, and one thing I always want to talk to coaches about is special teams, because you've got Jonathan Barnes as your kicker, very steady, but you're breaking in a new punter this yes. season. No, well, breaking in uh, a new punter is is always hard. I yeah. mean, al always hard. And a new deep snapper. Breaking in a new deep snapper. Besides new punter. that, it's perfect, Besides right? that, the punting game, we're easy. <laughs> so I talked to Jay Mar about his job is to make sure we don't have to punt this year. <laughs> so I, I feel really good. I feel really good about it now. Uh, Jonathan Barnes is a stud. I mean, that guy, what he's done for us, kicking the game winner in the bowl game last right. year, uh, he has just been – he's been money for us. I, I think he's got a chance to have a great year this year. And then we will. We'll have a couple new punts but I like what I saw out of spring practice, and I think we've got a chance, believe it or not, to actually be more productive uh, in our punting game from a net punt than we were a year ago. So uh, I think there's a, lot of, there's a lot of bright spots to it, but there's still a lot of new faces that are going to have to come in with all the receivers gone, right. with the new quarterback. Uh, some people are really going to have to step up, but I like the way that this team is coming together, the way they're gelling, the work ethic, the brotherhood, the togetherness, and the camaraderie I think is going to give us a chance. Well, Barnes made 22 of 26 field goal attempts last last year, Lou Groza semifinalist. Do you still have the Aussie punter? 
We do. We have. He is going through. He's played football six months, I think. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And it showed during spring practice, <laughs> I think. It showed that this was his first time he's been punting a football. Uh, and then yeah. all of a sudden when we put a line in front of him and a rush, it was a little erratic. But uh, I also think that he got better this spring, and he got a little bit more comfortable. He's got a very strong leg, uh, but excited to watch him play this fall. He's a rugby guy, by the way. <laughs> Here's something you and I were just talking about. Impressive three-year run on offense. We talk about Louisiana Tech and what they do. Finished 14th, 19th, and second in scoring over that period. But what was impressive to me reading those numbers, the fact that you had a different quarterback each of those years. Obviously, the system works. Now, the system does work, and we've been very, as I said, very blessed with some senior quarterbacks that have really bought in and done a great job for us, and, uh, and Cody Sokol, Ryan Higgins. I mean, those guys really have done and Jeff Driscoll, who did a really nice job for us the last three years. But as he said, uh, I feel very confident in Jay Marr as a young guy stepping into the program. I think Tim Rattay has done a really nice job with the quarterbacks and the development of the quarterbacks and the way that they're playing and reading right now. Uh, and I think I'm excited about watching this football team play this year for sure. You, you've got just a couple of weeks, gentlemen, before you put the pads on and start going. Talk about the expectations for this team. Jay, are you first? Uh, the first expectation is to win a conference. You know, they've been there three years, and we had, we, we, we're there, and we're just trying to win it all and uh, make sure we, we bind closer together. You know, we, the team has to come from within, and uh, as leaders on the team, we have to make sure that the team become closer than ever. Because during fall camp, you know, it's a grind. It's, it's not hard. It's a grind on you mentally. So you got to make sure you push everybody and just work hard every day. Cedric? <coughs> um, the ultimate goal, you know, is to win the conference championship. But, yeah, like Jay Moore said, it's a grind. We got to push every single day. And um, I think the main goal is going to be making sure everyone is on the same page and making sure that we do everything the right way this year. Now, one other thing, if you take those shoes off, I'm taking them. <laughs> I'll put socks in on the toes and wear them. Gentlemen, best of luck this season, Skip. Yes, Always a pleasure, my friend. We appreciate you, Thank you very much. Good we appreciate you. it. Thank you all. We'll continue our coverage from Dallas, Texas. North Texas is straight ahead.